first revealed John Cleese in his bathtub? We did. Did you miss it? Who first revealed that Bill Oddie had shrunk in the wash? We did. Did you miss it? Who first called Tim Brooke Taylor a sweetie? I did. I mean, we did. <laughs> um, did. Did you miss it? You did. Yes. Who first noticed... Who first noticed the difference between Joe Kendall and David Hatch? We did. Did you spot it? <laughs> Who first revealed that life as we know it was possible in Humphrey Barclay? <laughs> we did? <laughs> All these and more were in our programme in April 1936. Did you miss it? Yes. So did I. Switch off quickly and you'll miss this week's too. Yes. <laughs> Ragtime Ichiku Boop Boop Do You of the Angus Prune Tune, we once again tear the dust sheets off Tim Brooke Taylor, John Cleese, David Hatch, Joe Kendall, and Bill Oddy. And here to express your collective astonishment is John Otto Cleese. Oh no, it's I'm sorry, I'll read that again. again. I am surprised. <laughs> Ah, oh, good morning, sir. A thousand welcomes to Wrigley's Bank, your friendly bank service. This is the bank that is best, national and international. The bank, here and all over the world, yeah. now and forevermore, amen. You don't want any money, do you? Well, 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 well I was... Well, it's highly inconvenient, you grotty little man, oh, creeping in and out of our bank asking for money. Damn it, we make it difficult enough for you to catch us in, only being open from 12 to 2. I suppose you're a client, are you? Yes. Yes. Well, that's what they'd look like, this. <laughs> What do you want, then? Hurry up, it's ten to two. Well, I want some traveller's checks. Well, we won't get through that in ten minutes. But, but, but please, look, you look, I give you some traveller's checks. It upsets our books. Oh. It's taken years to balance them up. We've had a couple of quiet months, and then you come along. I'll pay for them. You're telling me you will. With cash. Where is this cash, then? Uh, it's in my account. Where's that? Here. Well, I'm not giving you any of our money. Oh, can't you take a check? Not without identification. You need your birth certificate, passport, driving license, yeah. baptism certificate. Yeah. There's a photograph of yourself yeah. signed by a medical practitioner of seven years standing. Also yeah. by a justice of the peace, a clerk in holy orders, a qualified pilot, yeah. three nuns, and Alec yeah. Tavish. Who? Who's he? Alec McTavish is a Scottish farmer living in Tierra del Fuego. <laughs> Well, that usually stumps them. Uh, look, uh, I've got 12 pound notes. They don't make 12 pound notes. No, I mean, I've got 12 pounds in one pound notes. Well, let's oh. have a look at them then. Hurry up or I'll bite your ears. Oh. Right, well, I'm not having that one for a start. Why not? Oh, it's filthy. So is that one. <laughs> oh, grief, so is... And that. I'm not giving you our nice, clean traveller's checks for these tatty old things. Where have they been? In my pocket. With your handkerchief? Yes. Yes, I thought so. <laughs> filthy <laughs> Why can't you keep your handkerchief in your wallet like I do? <laughs> you haven't been blowing your nose on these notes, have you? No! All right. I'll take these five and here's three pounds worth of traveller's checks. Three? I'll give you five. Yes, but your notes are second hand, aren't they? Oh. I'll give you 60% of them. Can't say fairer than that. Fairer than that. Oh, you can. All right, I'll give you 80%. <laughs> four pounds it is. I can't have a holiday on four pounds. Well, you could have a very, 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 very small one. No, oh, can I have my money back? No. Why not? It's two o'clock, we've closed. Get out! <laughs> Country people have very strange habits. They dance around maypoles, they Morris dance, they folk dance, and they spit. <laughs> so I put on my plastic Mac and taking my BBC tape recorder and my BBC voice with me, went down to Nether Wapping to interview two of the very last British folk dancers. I spoke to them. Well, Reuben and I have been doing folk dancing for as long as I can remember. Uh, and how long's that? It's fortnight. My memory's... <laughs> Not what it was three weeks ago. The one in the green with the bells and the antlers on his head is my brother Reuben, and the one in the brown with the collar is my dog Reuben. <laughs> Very confusing. Reuben, come here and say a few words to the gentleman. A few words to the gentleman. Ah, you should see him trolling the pole. Troll your pole for him, Reuben. <laughs> now, nah, you see, he's shy of strangers. Well, uh, uh, what makes him more relaxed? Five pound note. <laughs> I'm sorry, I haven't any cash. You'll take a check? Oh, uh, well, the BBC will send him one. Oh, are you that, Reuben? You're being paid by the BBC for pulling your troll. Take it away, baby. Ah. I'm pointing the mariners, me boys. Ah. Ah. Rut hard, rut hard at the stag. Die for the queen. Ah. Heave ho, 
That's an old folk joke, Danny. <laughs> Reuben is almost completely naturally stupid, sir. Ah. He's village postman all winter and village idiot all summer. He's one of the best idiots around these parts, sir. May I know rut the stag? What, what's rutting the stag? Uh, oh, ah, well, this is one of his speciality dances, rut. sir. It's a satire on contemporary morals in Birmingham. I see that. <laughs> and, and when do you do it? On All Idiots Night, which is the third Tuesday following the first Saturday yeah. after the second Monday of Halloween, yeah. next to the Thursday but one following the waning of the moon, consequent on Ash Wednesday. Ah, unless it rains. <laughs> Uh, and if it does? Uh, 3rd of January. <laughs> well, perhaps I could persuade Reuben to uh, rub the stag for the BBC. No, sir, you couldn't. Well, what could? Forty pounds. Uh, <laughs> uh, would you say a word for us before you rut the stag? Ah, uh, before I rut the stag, yes, gentlemen. Folk dancing is a tradition. It's always been done in this part of the world, except nowadays when fewer and fewer folk are dancing. It's dying out. The whole tradition is passing away and dying out. And to my mind, it's like the Ice Steadford. It can't be too soon for me. <laughs> get back. Get back, you ugly savage brute. Get back when I say I'll show you who's master. Get back. Get back. Now, up. Hup, hup, watch it, you monster. Get back. John, darling, please leave Tibbles alone. <laughs> You've been tormenting him ever since you got up, and now it's Tuesday. He's got to be trained, hasn't he? He's got to be trained. Get back now on the stool. Get back. Fed up with having puddles all over the house. <laughs> well, why don't you mend the roof and stop making his life a misery? You blame everything that goes wrong on that poor little kitten. He's not a poor little kitten. He's an ugly, savage brute. Get back. Look at those claws and flashing eyes and slavering jaws. And listen to that noise he makes, roaring and snarling. Darling, he is not roaring and snarling. He's mewing piteously. And so would you if you were made to stand on a stool with all four legs tied together. <laughs> with a muzzle over your face and a wardrobe hanging from your tail. But he's dangerous. I'm afraid he might attack you. He's not dangerous, John, and you know it. Oh, John... Why are you so cruel? Why must you torture defenseless creatures? Fun. What have they done to you? It was the same with that fly yesterday. I had to kill it. Flies carry disease. Yes, but you could have killed it with a fly spray instead of pulling off its wings, throwing it in a vat of boiling oil, shooting it with a double barrel shotgun, and then putting its head on the gatepost as a warning to other flies. <laughs> Well, they have to be taught a lesson. <laughs> anyway, it was a very stupid fly. Get back! You see, I take my eyes off it for one moment and it moves. John, it was only breathing. <laughs> I'm going to teach you to beg. Come on, beg, beg. Come on, Tibbles, up, up, up. Oh, John, please stop trying to train things. I can't stand it anymore. I'm going to put Tibbles out and I'm going to bed. Put that cat back. Put it back, I say. Back, back, wife. Put it back when I tell you. Will you do as I say? Put it back. Oh, shut up! What do you think I am? Another pathetic creature that you can hurt and beat and bend to your will? I'm finished. Do you hear? Finished. From now on, you're on your own. Be careful or I'll set Tibbles on you. Oh, don't be so stupid. <laughs> Tibbles couldn't hurt anyone. No, couldn't he? Couldn't he? <laughs> Just watch this then. Kill, Tibbles. Kill. <laughs> After all that excitement, I expect you'd like a drink. Uh, so let's join W.E. Oddie in a pub where the dear little chap is singing a drinking song. Actually, one bit of lemon and he falls over. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Come, gentlemen, drink your Can I have a glass of milk, please? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Now listen here, barman, 
I've got an idea. I'm sorry about closing, sir. Still dry. So give us more beer. Yeah, Time to drink. Drink beer. Oh, 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 o
These things having been said, Caesar was by so much the more, therefore, notwithstanding the cohorts, by, to, or from, the having been drawn up battle line for a long time, however. Oh, I hate Latin. Friends, Romans, hovercraft, lend, hovercraft, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to... No, hang on, sorry. <laughs> Try it in Latin. Oh, oh. Um... Sibios Romae, hic ego antebellum, hic castris, sum hic gestate, hic divis, vias hic nobis, hic have you got a thick glass of water? <laughs> ah, now, no. look here, now, uh, no. No. look here, mob, I hear that someone is conspiring against my person and my person doesn't like it, and neither do I. No. Caesar, there's only one thing for it. Resign. No, you must consult the oracle and see what fate has in store so you may meet all danger and fight it till the end. I'd rather resign. No, <laughs> we must know the omens. Now, of course, the Romans were in the habit of telling the future by means of omens. The omens of the Romans. <laughs> they carved up little furry animals like bush babies and then they discerned amazing portents by the use of entrails and all that that entrails. <laughs> I know all this very well on account of what I am an oracle. In fact, oracle very well years ago that I was forewarned by the left ventricle of a possum that I would in future life become one John Otto Cleese. Anyway, <laughs> this is the BBC Rome service and here are the nine o'clock intestines. <laughs> one, two, three, four intestines. There's a nasty... <laughs> a nasty giblet centre just south of Carthage, which could well bring scattered showers this afternoon. And three varicose veins spreading north, uh, which may well put the mockers on the common market. <laughs> but if I'm not much mistaken, this ruptured liver means I'm going to have a most unpleasant lunch. And now the door will open, a man will enter, and I'll say, good morning, sir, I believe you are Caesar. Amazing, how did you know? I've seen you on the coins. Then what of my future? Have you anything to tell me? Ah, uh, well, let's see. Um, uh, your toga is torn. What does that reveal? Do you want an answer? <laughs> I, I think I'd rather you didn't tell me. No, what, what else? Well, from this, I'd say that you should go to Egypt. <laughs> so be it. Gropius, <laughs> I, must, I must go to Egypt to crave the help of Antony, he who may save me or break me. I must struggle alone against my destiny, stagger through the scorching desert under the burning sun. On and on I must go, risking body and soul. I must battle against the dunes, the heat. No air, no water, just one man. I see the marching on and on. But wait, I have a better idea. <laughs> You go. Oh, no. And so Caesar went to join the camel train. Sorry, sir, only camels on this train. <laughs> and so they forced him to trek alone across the sand. What a dirty trick. <laughs> on and on he trudged. Trudge, trudge, on, 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 trudge. Till at last he came to Alexandria and the land of Egypt. By the time he reached the city gate, his lips were cracked and his face was ashen. What? Ashen, ashen. All oh, fall down. <laughs> As he knelt there, he shouted at the gate. Rotten hell gate. <laughs> there was immediate response. I'm a gate and don't shout at me. <laughs> and a guard ushered him inside. He what? He what? Ushered, ushered. All oh, fall down. <laughs> Why do you keep doing that? Ah, oh, ah, oh, well, you see, it's a sort of hay fever, you see, you get from going across the desert sand. I see. You develop what they call a sans sneeze. Sans sneeze? sneeze? A bumps a daisy. Oh. Go on. See that as it may, he was conducted to a great marble hall where he was given some great marbles. And then. I am Caesar. Where is my old friend Antony? It is I! Antony! Ha! Caesar! <laughs> Come, you must meet my queen, but first, are you hungry? Yes, I am. Then try this. Ah, oh, her splendid, a custard with fruit and cream and sponge pudding. A mere trifle. Jelly good. <laughs> 
here comes Cleopatra. Oh! Infamous! The great queen swept into the room. <laughs> Ami, is this the queen that holds each man her slave? Ooh. <laughs> At this point, we would like to emphasize that Tim Brooke Taylor is playing both Cleopatra and Caesar. Very badly. Cleopatra, this is Caesar, hot from Rome. Oh, quick, let me have him before he cools down. <laughs> But tell us, Caesar, why are you here? My people are unsettled. Is it something they ate? Yes, me, and I ate them too. I can't stand them. I want you to come back to Rome with me and bring your queen. I need a good boost. Ooh, glad you like it. So you'll come. Yes. No. What? No, 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 no. Oh, blow your Roman nose. Oh, sorry. Quickly, let us leave. To Rome? Anywhere after that. And so the great party set out across the desert. Antony rode on a camel while 17 slaves carried his baggage. Careful, you're bumping me. <laughs> Halfway through the third day, Caesar called out, Look on the horizon, the seven hills of Rome. No, 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 it's three maidens and an Amazon sunbathing. Think about it. <laughs> Onwards, it's Rome or Bath. That's a clue. <laughs> But eventually, they did reach the ancient city. Ah, Rome, sweet Rome. The people had turned out in force, and fives and sixes. And as they marched through the streets... Listen, sire, they're singing your praises. Your praises! Antony and his queen rode on a wagon, and Cleopatra arranged her seat so all could see. Cool, look at that seat. <laughs> you a queen. Oh, All right. right. <laughs> At this, Antony burst out in anger. Oh, spit. <laughs> Cleopatra's my queen. Not any longer. I want her back. All right, now I'll take her front. No, Cleopatra. <laughs> Cleopatra, I'm taking you. No, I'm taking you. There's only one way to settle it. How? Well, I think we're in the right place. You, you mean? mean? Yes. Footballs. At 50 paces. No, 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 no. To the end. <laughs> And the two teams are lining up, Caesar numbering from right to left, number one, Caesar. And it looks as if Anthony's playing in a north north one formation. And the whistle goes, and right away it's Caesar on the attack, but Anthony's taking the ball off him. Can I have my ball back? But uh, <laughs> this time it's Caesar over the halfway, Anthony rushing back into defence. Oh, ready, friends. <laughs> Uh, but he's up again and he's got it. And now Anthony's breaking away, passes to the left, Anthony moving forward inside to Anthony, long ball to Anthony, and he's got it. Coming down the wing, he beats one man inside, he beats the same man, he cuts him round, identical man, and he's only got one man immediately, he's round him, and he's up to Caesar, Caesar doubling back, no, he's tagged him, he has got it, no, he's Anthony, yes, he has. No, Anthony's got the ball, Anthony, Belladier is up to the post, Caesar to the left, Anthony's going to shoot, he shoots, he shoots, he's done it, he's scored, he's scored! Caesar is beaten. Oh, fate, fate, my fate are killing me. Ah! <laughs> and so the having been defeated Caesar, moreover for a long time notwithstanding, in the by so much the more battle line, having not been, but who also was. <laughs> but even as he lay there in his football shorts, a Roman maiden knelt gently by him and made one last tender observation. <gasps> I never knew he had such bony knees. Yes, this was the nobliest Roman of them all. <laughs> and here endeth this week's Comedy of Errors. Oh. If you were listening, the voices you heard were those of Timbrook Taylor, John Cleese, David Hatch, Joe Kendall, and the part of Bill Oddie was played by Porky the Pig. <laughs> Little Billy Odd wrote the songs, and the music was by Sweet Davy Lee, with arrangements by his henchman, Leon Cohen. Hench the mistakes. <laughs> the scripts were by Lizzie Evans, Eric Idle, and Bill Oddie, with additional material by Derek Farmer and Graham Chapman. Humphrey Barclay was the man behind the production. A long, long way behind <laughs> Yes, well, so there we are with nothing but a week of anticlimax to look forward to. Until once again you hear the golden words of John Otto Cleese. Oh, no, it's the Wonder Zone. <laughs> the door.
I'm sorry, I'll be bad again. I'm a bad again. 